Hey everyone, Kaylee, your friendly neighborhood hairstylist here with my fiance Jenna. And today we're doing a little haircut Q&A because Jenna, I don't know how, was convinced to come on YouTube. <laughs> you guys are all so nice. Aww. So we're going to be cutting your hair and answering some questions. Let's do it. Tell the good people what's going on with your hair right now. <laughs> my hair is in severe need of a cut. It got really long. It tends to like flip out. Yes. A lot and I kind of look like someone off the Brady Bunch. <laughs> Which is a look. Yeah, so the longer it gets, especially around like my motorcycle helmet and stuff, it just kind of flips right out. Mm -hmm. So just bringing it back up, maybe, I think you said maybe even a little shorter, like around my jawline. Yeah. So. Hee hee hee. Yeah. So what I'm thinking is like a nice, like shorter bob, like right here. Mm -hmm. And that way you get a nice, like horizontal line here. We can pull it a tiny, tiny bit more up back here so that it like compliments your jawline from the side. How do you feel about it? That sounds good. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Get it all off my neck. Yes. <laughs> all right, baby doll, let's do it. Let's cape you up. Rainbows and everything. Yeah, it's got a rainbow on it. This is uh, from Framari. They sent me a bunch of their stuff. This is one of my favorite capes I've ever used. So I'm wetting Jenna's hair this time. I love to cut long hair dry. I can visualize the cut better. I feel like I have more control over it, but once you get into lobs and bobs, I feel like the exact opposite. It gives me just a little bit more control, a little bit more precision, and then usually I will either cut or refine the layers once it's dry. I do feel like people that saw my video with Saf would think that they're surprised that I am now cutting your hair after I talked about how I followed you around. <laughs> evaluating my work for three weeks. I mean, I wonder if it'll happen again. It might not. Or it might. It's probably gonna, okay. I know myself pretty well. <laughs> Report back in a week if, if you've been following me around. Oh yeah, Saf also made it sound like I would uh, be a little aggressive. Or, <laughs> what was that? I think that she could, that you could beat her up. I would never, Saf, come on. <laughs> you don't even like kill bugs. You walk them outside nicely. Most bugs. Yeah. You ride a motorcycle, so people assume that you're like super hard, but no. You're just a sweet little marshmallow. Those are the people that are the softest. I mean, I'm tough. Here, you get to be the question czar. This is so very obviously Kaylee's phone, if you can't tell. <laughs> Where's mine? Ta-da. <laughs> have you set a wedding date? Question number one. Hee <laughs> hee. Uh, yes, we have. It's in like the first half of 2022. Yeah, so we got a little time doing all the planning. All the planning, all the stuff. I felt like we had a lot of time and now I, I feel like we're behind. The planning like platform that we have from our planner, you can go in and do checklists and it says we're only like 15% of the way through, but we're ahead of schedule. So I think we're fine. <laughs> How are our wedding plans going? Oof. Um, you know, <laughs> so stressful. We were really, on it with booking some things and we felt like we were ahead of it and then all of a sudden we started going to book the rest of stuff and everything's booked because like two years of people have gotten bottlenecked into one year mm -hmm. yep basically like the hunger games and i'm dying yeah <laughs> okay i have my own question has wedding planning been different than you anticipated i knew it was gonna cost a lot <laughs> but i don't think i really understood how much it costs. Like we're not extravagant people. I know. And so I feel like we're doing it within reason mm -hmm. and I still just don't understand. It's really just the industry. It'll all be worth it. It's been fun to like split things up. Oh, I love that. So like, oh my gosh, marry a woman. <laughs> Holy cow. I feel like the wedding planning process is so much easier in some ways than I anticipated because Jenna's just like, oh, I've got this one and handles all the communication and like research and I'm like, oh, okay, I'll show up for the meeting. Well, and then vice versa. If it's something you're really stoked about, I just show up to that meeting. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Joint email oh my gosh. was a tip from our planner and that's the best been thing. awesome because yeah. if I send an email, but then we talk about it mm -hmm. and then you see it and I'm busy, like you reply and we just tag team it and it saved us, I think a lot of time. So much time. We need the story of how Kaylee proposed. <laughs> Yes, if you missed it on Instagram, uh, I showed you guys that I did propose and you now have a ring. Both have rings. Whoa. So I decided to do it on the road trip because Jenna is in a permanent state of wanderlust and I felt like on the road would be the move. Mm -hmm. I picked Joshua Tree because 
I think it's one of your favorite places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Lots of cool. memories. Um, you even have a tattoo from a trip that you took there. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite pictures on her dating profile was from Joshua Tree. It just was meant to be. So I surreptitiously booked an Airbnb. Ostensibly, what she knew mm -hmm. was that the campground that she wanted didn't work out. That actually just happened, thankfully. I took too long to book it. <laughs> it's very sad. It happens. But you were really upset and I was like, I'm gonna figure out this whole Airbnb thing. We'll get a cute Airbnb, it'll be great. I told her that my manager found one that wanted us to come and stay and take pictures for social media. Complete lie. Believed it all. And so we end up driving up from LA to the Airbnb. Jenna's driving the whole way. I just put in the GPS and she has no idea that she's driving to her own engagement. So we get to the Airbnb. This is where my plan went awry. <laughs> there was a garage, which I knew and I was really glad for because I had a photographer and I wanted her to be parked in there so that Jenna wouldn't see the extra car. Comma, however, the garage doors were glass. <laughs> Who does that? It looked great. But yeah, <laughs> I um, saw a car and I freaked out and just you know went into protector mode and was like, this isn't right. There's not supposed to be a car. I was like, no, 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 no. It's just the Airbnb's extra car, probably. They just keep it there when they're not using it. It's fine. I wasn't buying it. Mm. And then the door had accidentally, like, been ajar and then swap, like, was swinging open in the wind. The front door the of front the door. Airbnb. And I was like, definitely not going inside. We're calling the Airbnb host. Like, this is not right. It's not safe. We're not going inside. And I was like, okay. <laughs> what what am I gonna do here? I've just gotta let her know what's happening. I've just gotta like give a big hint that this is a romantic moment and she just needs to chill. So I'm all like, babe, trust me. I was trying to go full rom-com. I don't know what I said, but I, that was what I was trying to do. You had alarm bells in your head. All over. Mm -hmm. And heard nothing. Heard none of it. Nope, she was just freaking out until we got about halfway through the house <laughs> and you saw the back patio and the back patio like the was door was open so i was like okay yeah it was um something's going on it was what i picked out the house for because it had this gorgeous like 360 view of joshua tree and there was like this perfect little overlook area and so i had had somebody go and set up like flowers and stuff and it was a perfect little place to propose with the view yeah. and then i wanted to just have like the sweetest most romantic night you know after so i had like a charcuterie board and a custom record player with our songs on it. Um, of course, disposable cameras for funsies and heart-shaped pizza. Can we have pizza tonight? Sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, Jenna's favorite food is pizza. So between all the things, it was just like supposed to be an elaborate but intimate gesture. That's what I went for. Nailed it. I loved it and we need to go back to Joshua Tree. We didn't have long enough there. Yeah. How did you meet? Oh, a lot of people wanted to know that one. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we met on a dating app. Yep. Like everyone does nowadays, I'm pretty sure. Yep. Um, um, it was Tinder. We say we hit the Tinder jackpot. <laughs> we talked for a little bit and then we met up for some wine. Mm -hmm. And we talked for like four hours. Yep. And had no idea what time it was. I was so nervous, I forgot to even pay the tab. <laughs> so I had to go back after you left, I got all the way home and was like, oh crap. And I drove all the way back and paid the tab. Yeah. That's how nervous I was because it was great. <laughs> it really was. I had gotten to the point where, I don't remember why, but I had decided that I only wanted to like swipe on people that had already swiped on me. So that's how I found Jenna's profile. Shut I up. thought you were adorable and you seemed like so down to earth and cool, but also like adventurous. Shout out to my friend Don who sent me your profile. A. We would send each other people back and forth that we thought were a good fit for each other. That worked out. Yep. <laughs> I get to tell people for the rest of my life that I met my wife on Tinder. Wife. How was Jenna's hair care routine before she met you? <laughs> what do you think? Average? Honestly, it wasn't bad. Slightly subpar? It was not bad. Maintained. It's yeah. A good way to, yeah. You styled your hair well. You were taking care of it pretty well, actually. The first time you came over, my uh, bathroom has like a big glass door so you can see all the products inside, which mm -hmm. were not many. But Kaylee came back out and was like, oh, you have Kristen S. That's great. <laughs> I was like, great, great. I was nervous about that. Yeah, yeah. No, you had pretty good products that you were using and you had a pretty good routine. I think I switched out your brushes first thing. That was the only thing that I was like, that needs to go. Yeah, they were old. 
Yeah, they were loved. They were well loved. Yeah. Is there another doggy in the house with Pippin? Uh, yes. It's your dog, Wrigley. I think you need to tell the people about her. So yeah, Wrigley is six. Um, she's a rescue dog from Saving Grace, if you're in North Carolina. Highly recommend them. Yeah, I got her when she was four months old and she was underweight. They told me that she would be 35 to 45 pounds, which seemed ideal because I grew up with a Jack Russell and so I wanted something a little bigger, but not a lot. And so that seemed like, you know, I could manage that. She is 75 pounds. <laughs> I love her. Like, She's wouldn't a sweet baby. change it, but was not expecting that. But I think if I had been around larger dogs, probably would have known, but. It's the giant paws for giant me. Giant paws, yeah. I look back at pictures and I'm like, how did I not know that? <laughs> Plotdale or Plot Hound Airedale mix. Which equals Plotdale. Plotdale. <laughs> yeah, I did the DNA test. So she is a, yeah, half Plot Hound. So she's brindled and half Airedale. So she's kind of wiry and scruffy and has a beard. Although I still think that the test was wrong and she's part Irish Wolfhound. I know better than science, okay? I don't know better than science, <laughs> but. She's convinced. I'm really convinced. Have you DNA, seen one? The like, DNA on. was swapped. Just something in their little algorithm just went slightly askew. That's all I'm saying. She is very, very sweet. Loves kids and other dogs. She's a dog's dog for sure. Yeah. Um, she kind of reminds me of um, Maximus from Tangled. Mm. I love it. The horse, right? Yeah, the horse. I super love it. And then Pippin's definitely the chameleon and they have like a similar <laughs> relationship to the two. That's fair. Like they get along, they're just kind of chill. They're just kind of roommates together. Mm -hmm. They don't like cuddle with each other or anything, but they're cool, you know? Mm -hmm. Does Jenna like your dog? She looks more like a cat person. <laughs> No I, just, I thought that was just really funny because like a I don't see it, but I'm such a dog person too Yeah, you're a hardcore dog person, but also do you like Pippin? I love Pippin. Pippin's yeah. the best. He's so snuggly and sweet. My dog's not very cuddly, so Pippin is a good substitute. Yeah. I feel like we get the best of all the doggo worlds with the two of them together. Mm-hmm. Because she's such a dog dog. Pippin is not a dog dog. No. No. Pippin is half cat, half dog, half Prince? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think this is probably your favorite question out of all the questions. Ooh, okay. Astrological signs. Tee! I am a Cancer with a rising Capricorn and my moon is in Taurus. <laughs> I'm Sagittarius, that's all I got. I have no idea. <laughs> your moon is in Cancer. I cannot remember your rising sign for the life of me. I feel like it's either Libra or Virgo. Yeah, you're a rising Libra. I don't know what any of that means. Any tips for someone who's questioning their sexuality? I don't know how to figure it out. Oh, been there. Everyone's been there. Yeah. <laughs> for me, it was when I was young. Some people kind of have those inner thoughts and conversations like later on in life. But for me, when I was young, it was the back and forth of the thoughts, but dismissing them or trying to push them aside and ignore them and you know wanting to fit in and wanting to not disappoint anyone and things like that so it, it's hard to give yourself the space i think and society doesn't really give you the space to figure that out so you just have to make space and i think the best way to make space is to surround yourself with people that will be accepting yeah and you know start having those conversations, not just internally, but externally with very trusted, very safe, very celebratory people. Yeah. So I agree. Getting space where you can think through things is definitely the best. If you don't feel like you have a space, whether it's like you're not comfortable yet or it just doesn't exist for you to like think all this out loud with people, the internet is super helpful. It was my best friend for a very long time. Um, you can read a lot of different like queer experiences. You can watch videos. Hannah Hart's book really meant a lot to me. TikTok has actually helped me a lot. TikTok's like queer section, so good. And I think just like give yourself permission to be in flux and remember that like all of us have gone through this. All of us have had to figure out exactly where we fall. Especially I think, I, I don't know if it's unique or bigger with bisexual people, but I do feel like I've had a lot of struggle figuring out like, am I in the middle? Am I at one end or the other? It's like a whole thing. And it's a spectrum. It is. And I would say, don't worry so much about finding your label first. I would say focus on finding yourself. It kind of sounds cheesy, but just letting yourself be yourself. Go on dates, experience. And as you do that, you'll probably have more clue than if you try to work it like a math problem before you do. <laughs> Yeah, and just notice like who are you most at ease with and most comfortable yeah. yourself around. What was it like dating someone coming to terms with figuring out their sexuality? 
What does that feel like for you? I think communication is the most important thing in that situation because you're both coming at it from mm -hmm. different places and obviously it can work um, if you're both heading in the same direction or can be on the same page about it. Agreed. Communicating what you each are looking for and what uh, you want is important. Just like if one person wants something casual and one person wants some something long-term, like much easier to discuss that at the beginning than halfway through. Yeah. I feel like from my end of it, I was very like upfront with like, hi, my name is Kaylee and I'm just figuring out my sexuality. <laughs> How are you? That wasn't my exact opening message, but it was not much different. Which I've had people do in the past and I think the way you went about it was so honest and genuine and you had been thinking about it for a long time. It wasn't something that was just like new. And so that kind of put me at ease and you know, I communicated what I was looking for and needed, which was, you know, looking for something long-term and needed to not go back in the closet myself. Yeah. Um, Cause I had worked really hard to be out and happy and proud and what we determined was that we were both moving in the same direction and wanted to get to know each other. Yeah, I really feel like it is really about the person who is more established in their sexuality. You've got to be like, okay, so I'm here. This is where I'm coming from. So like, I want a serious relationship you're fresh out of the closet like or you're figuring yourself out you're coming out like do you think you can go on that journey and really giving somebody space to actually think through that and then i think for the person that is a little bit newer you really do have to like do a lot of soul searching and figure out like what is right for me okay this one's interesting that okay. is for you okay how is a relationship with a woman different than one with a man Ooh. so i haven't dated a ton of guys so i can't say like every guy it's so different though i think my favorite thing that i noticed first was that there's this like built-in equality mm -hmm. that would take so much work to create between a man and a woman because there's so much gender norms and how much it's just in life like the waiter's always going to hand the dude the check the man's name is always going to come first on a lease and it's just built in in ways that you don't even think about it until all of a sudden like you both inhabit the same space in society, essentially. Yeah, there's no assumptions about what you're gonna do or what I'm gonna do. Yeah. The first assumption is it's equal. I also think women are a lot more socialized to be in tune with and understand and able to talk about their emotions, and that is so good. <laughs> Being with somebody that understands periods, that's mm -hmm. great too, and isn't grossed out by them, amazing. I didn't have to moderate my excitement about our relationship because I was afraid I would freak you out. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's true for everybody either, but that was a big one for me. Highly recommend. <laughs> also, girls are soft and smell good. <laughs> Jenna, what do you do for a living? I am a graphic designer, so it's kind of nice how our creativity yeah. overlaps, but is different. So I feel like we have some similarities there, but it's different enough. Yes, I really enjoy that. I enjoy that we both kind of know what it feels like to have to monetize creativity. It's not easy. I'm sure some of you guys can relate, but yeah, we're not talking about the same things at the end of the day. So it, it's never like tiresome or like, okay, this feels exactly like work. Or competitive in any way. Yeah. Okay, I think I've mostly got the cut in. She's looking a little air dried. So let me dry her the rest of the way, do a little styling and see what else we need to do. Alrighty, now this is very like straight and sleek, so it's not quite how I'm envisioning you always wearing it, but we're getting there. I like the length. I just want it to just have some more attitude, really. Yeah? Yeah. I'm gonna do some layers, but I'm gonna try not to make them too short for you. Sounds good. Okay. Does Jenna's family like you? What's not to like? I don't want to toot my own horn or anything. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I, think, I think they like me pretty well. Her parents are the sweetest. I feel like they full on like just brought me in and they were like, okay, so Kaylee's like our daughter now. It's great. <laughs> it's been super duper sweet and I love it. I think that was one of my favorite parts when we were dating was just introducing Kaylee to everybody and how well she fit right in and uh, got along with everybody and yeah. Honeymoon plans. Oh, we're working on it. If you have suggestions, yeah, please let us know. Places that are safe for LGBTQ plus people to travel 
and where we can relax but have a tiny bit of adventure and not be too touristy, but like a little bit. Sitting on a beach with drinks sounds like the best way to unwind after a wedding, wedding plans. Yeah. Okay, back to a relationship question. Hey. Um, was there hesitation knowing that she, Kaylee, was married before? Was there? <laughs> no. Everyone has their histories, right? And their pasts. And it was definitely something that I was like, oh, I'd like to know more and why and yeah, what the circumstances were. And once I found out like what those circumstances were, yeah, it says more about who you were with than you. And I got to know you and I didn't have any reservations or hesitations there. Yeah. Thank you. I really do feel like it's its own thing. It's not just like dating, but I feel like especially once you get towards 30, like most people have been in a long-term relationship. And so I feel like you shouldn't treat people that are divorced as like that much different than somebody that was in a six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 year long relationship. It is different. I don't love that there's this kind of stigma there because mm -hmm. you know, we all have our reasons and we all do our best to end up with the right person, but sometimes it doesn't work out. Where did you find that ring box? Oh uh, yeah, where did you find that ring box, baby? On Etsy. And then you filled it with moss from moss, a craft store? Moss from Michaels. And picked out all the flowers, and Anna Laura helped arrange everything on the sign. Um, and I had her pull a few off of the little ones to throw in the ring box. Yeah, yeah we need to give Anna Laura the credit on that. She killed, she killed the arrangement. And then that idea for that box was just so cute. I loved it. Just it just looked so much like something that you would want to have. Yeah, it was like the perfect amount of cottage core. I'm just gonna grab my trusty one inch iron. I don't know why I thought I should do anything else. Now, I didn't really go too crazy with the shag because Jenna does like to wear her hair natural and I want her to play around with how the layers right now hit when she does her curls and then we'll mess around with it later. So the benefit of living with me is I can just kinda add it if I need to. And Jenna always has this hair tucked behind her ear so we're just going all the way there. It lives there now. It does. All right, do you wanna see it? Yeah, I like it. You do? Yeah. Promise? Of course. Yeah? Yeah. So yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. I'm gonna call myself out a little bit. I layered a little bit more, like I beveled this side a little bit more than I meant to, but other than that, like I really like the blunt. You've got a little bit of like a slight angle on the side. You can wear it straight, you can texturize it, you can wear your natural texture, whatever you wanna do. Well, I think that's it though. We have answered questions, we have cut hair. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I'm gonna stop playing with the hair now. <laughs> this has been really fun. Thank you for being so sweet to Jenna and I and making a safe place for Jenna to come on here. Um, and for being patient with me while I've been gone in the month of June. I really, 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 really needed some time to get this whole studio moved. I went on a road trip across the country and back. Before that, I got engaged. Before that, I came out. <laughs> and then on the road trip, I proposed. And then I came back and moved my entire studio just because I, the lease was up there and I wanted to be closer to our house. So now I'm finally <laughs> settled and videos are coming back. So definitely let me know in the comments what videos you wanna see next. But that is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to hit the like button to help support the channel. And if you're new here, you can hit the subscribe button to join the Bradaholic family here on Kaylee Melissa. And all of you guys can hit that bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. But that's it for today. <laughs> but that's it for today, whether you're old or new or a casual lurker. Thank you for spending time with me and I'll see you in my next video. Mwah. Bye. Did it. I did it. I forgot my outro. I'm trying very hard not to sing. We're not doing a middle part. We're doing a middle part. Sorry, Gen Z. Get that thing off of me. It's nice. <laughs> I don't care if it's nice. Happy anniversary.